preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. A pleasant good evening to you, online family. I warmly welcome you back to another Sunday evening service where we can fellowship together and learn more about Jesus. This evening, we are looking at the theme, What if the cross was fake? What if the cross was fake? At this time, I encourage you to like and share the page so that others can be blessed by this evening's program. Before we begin, let's all put ourselves in the manner for prayer as we ask God's guidance for this evening's program. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you so much for the bread of life. We want to thank you for all your blessings. As we come before you, Lord, we ask that you please forgive us from all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As you are about to begin this Sunday evening program, we ask that you will be with everyone looking here tonight. I pray that you will be with each and every one so that they can be drawn closer to you. Continue to provide and protect for us and cover us with your blood. Take charge and control. In your name I pray. Amen. Psalms 96, 1 to 2 says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. This evening, we have our choristers standing by to lift up songs to glorify the name of the Lord. Clap your hands, sing along with them as they lead out in song service.
518. Of Christ, my Savior, stand. 
Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Hymn number 618, 680.
Christus for such a wonderful song service. God's name be praised. There is power in prayer. There is a mighty force whenever we go to the almighty source. There is hope in prayer. It's our defense and shield. When to God our hearts we give to him and yield. There is conviction in prayer. It's our eternal assurance. It helps us to run the race with patience and endurance. There is joy in prayer. It's the means to happiness. For when we trust God, it brings his heart gladness. There is power in prayer. Just go to the almighty source. There is strength and greatness behind his mighty force. At this time, Pastor Stephen Francois will intercede on our behalf. All right, good evening, good evening, brethren. Thank you for joining us tonight. I pray that you have been having a wonderful time thus far. So at this time, let us all bow ahead for prayer. Almighty and eternal Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful experience that you have given unto us to be alive. We thank you, Lord, for your strength that is perfecting our weaknesses. We thank you, Lord, for just being our God, our friend, and our Savior. We thank you, Lord, for our online viewers and those who are always engaged, Lord Jesus, in viewing and and experiencing your love and your mercies from day to day. We thank you, Lord, for the various um, individuals who have surrendered their lives to you. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for even this opportunity that you have given unto us so we can be in the comfort of our home and viewing your, your good news, the gospel, Lord, that can save men and women, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for that boy, that girl, that man, that woman, Lord. Uh, we thank you for just blessing them, Lord, in a very mark way. We pray, Lord, for that individual who is not feeling well. They are not experienced. They are not experiencing the best of health. But I pray, O oh Lord Jesus, that you will just step down and reach and touch them, O oh Lord, and, and grant them some form of physical healing, O oh Lord, or spiritual healing, Lord, or mental healing, Lord. May you touch them with your righteous hand, O oh Lord Jesus, and reassure them, O oh God, that what is impossible for man, it is possible with God. So, Lord, reach out and touch your people, Lord. I pray, Lord, for that family, Lord, who marriage, Lord, is not in the best that they would like it to be. I pray, Lord, that they, you, you just reach done and cloak yourself, Lord, in the midst of that marriage, Lord, so that you can keep it together. You can keep it steady, Lord. We know, Lord, the, that old man called Satan doesn't like when, 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 when families, oh Lord, are united to marriage, Lord. And so, therefore, Lord, even this evening, we rebuke every evil scheme of the enemy and we claim victory for families this evening. We pray, Lord, that you will give them overcoming power and that they will trust in you and that they will depend upon you, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the speaker even now that the anointing of your holy spirit would rest upon them oh lord and that by your grace as i speak your word that they would speak with 
clarity with authority lord and that they will speak not their own words but words that come from the throne of god so thank you lord for the anointing lord thank you lord for your many blessings and we praise you we glorify your name and we pray lord that by your grace oh lord when it is at all come to an end that each and every one of us will be safe that in that second and wonderful experience when you shall bust the eastern sky in jesus mighty name amen and amen Amen and Amen. Let's all turn our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 25 to 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 25 to 27. And you will listen while I read. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the wickedness of God is stronger than men, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Good is the reading of God's word. Music plays an important part in our worship, and as we meditate on the scripture reading, let's all open our hearts to receive this special message in song. God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear for anyone anywhere god can do anything he turns nothing into something is the giver of life hope to the hopeless and the sight to the blind he makes impossible possible when there's no other way, he makes the blackest scene white as snow. That's why we can say, God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. For anyone, anywhere. God can do anything. Online viewers, what a message in song this evening. I pray that you are blessed and you are drawn closer to God. It is now time for the spoken word. And this evening, we are privileged to hear from a powerful man of God. A man who loves the Lord dearly. He is the pastor of the Southeastern District. And he will enlighten us on the topic, What if the cross was fake? Online viewers, I present to you Pastor Marlon Peters. Good evening to all our viewers and welcome to another Sunday evening's service. It's a joy to share with you from the Word of God today. And I pray by God's grace today as you receive and reminisce upon the word of God, that God will bless your heart. Before we get into the message today, shall you bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, we bless your name in all the earth. 
We thank you ever so much, God, for your love, your goodness, and your mercy towards us. I pray, Father, that your word will find lodgment into the hearts of its hearers, and that many will come to the reality that there is still a Savior in this world today. Teach us, O oh God, even now, for Christ's sake. Our scripture for focus comes from the book 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, reading from verse number 23 to 25. <clears throat> I read, But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because, according to verse number 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. What if the cross was fake? Ladies and gentlemen, the cross in ancient times signifies persecution, violence, shame, ridicule. The cross bears with it the notion of negativity. The cross, everyone tries to escape in his day in relation to the cross. It was the most public humiliation for any individual to find themselves be placed upon a cross. The cross signifies nothing, nobody, Nothing good. The cross. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this evening, to answer the question, what if the cross was fake? I'm going to answer three other questions that will lead us in understanding that mega question. The first question I will seek to answer is what necess necessitates the cross? The second one, what validates the cross? And the third one, what culminates the cross? i leave my first question. What necess necessitates the cross? Ladies and gentlemen, we are well informed by now that God created this universe. And when God created this universe, it was perfect. It was flawless. He didn't need any help from any individual to make any part of it better. Why? Because the master tech himself touched this universe, calls it into existence, and established it for the inhabitants of this world. But my, my friends today, after the creation of this universe, God would have given specific commands to mankind. He would have given commands informing us that we should be obedient to his will at all times. My friends, it is always danger to violate God commands. God commands is not just some rule-based laws that is written on script or on some board or stones, but, but it is in, in delve in the, in, the, in, the, in the cognitive sense of God himself, if, if we can get in there, which, which no man can. But it is, it is derived from the principle that, that characterizes the personhood of God himself. And therefore, we cannot escape or separate the command of God to God himself. Because it is part of him. Holiness defines our God. But because of the violation of such principle, we are in this sinful mess that we are in today. What necessitates the cross? The Bible says that the earth after the fall in Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 2, For behold, the, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon the after sin, my beloved friends, this evening. The earth was filled with spiritual darkness, waywardness. The earth had no sense of direction. Mankind would have, would have, would have damaged the image of God within him. Now sin reigns because of disobedience. What necessitates the cross? Genesis chapter 3. And verse 15 helps us to understand 
what necessitates the cross. It was the fall that necessitates the cross. And, and because of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, we thank God that mankind didn't end it in Eden. Because the truth is, our action calls for termination. Our action says that God, you should done away with us. Justice and, and mercy seems to, be, seems to be serious contention to save humanity. On one hand, justice is saying we must get rid of him. But on the other hand, the mercy of God is saying and, and endure. The mercies of God is saying extend pity, extend grace. But in case we do not know, within the nature and character of God himself, he upholds justice, and at the same time, he extends mercy. And therefore, we can't treat any for granted. But what necessitates the cross? It is the fall that necess necessitates the cross. And therefore, my beloved friends, we, we cannot treat the cross as any mean stuff. The cross has to be significant. It has to be significant because God was willing to go fully well on the cross to deliver mankind from the perils of the cross. What necessitates the cross is that Christ, looking down from heaven and looking at some wayward sinners with no sense of direction, hopelessness seems to reign, but God interjected here by necessitating the cross. Isaiah puts it this way in Isaiah chapter 53. Who had believed our report and to whom the arm of the Lord revealed. Speaking about the promised Messiah on the cross. And, and in verse 5 and 6 the Bible makes it clear that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and with his stripes we are healed. We thank God today that with every stripe that he took it brought healing Unto us, what necessitates the cross? It is our sinful nature that caused Jesus to take the cross. And hence, my beloved friends, we cannot treat the cross lightly. No, we must never treat the cross lightly. Because if sin could necessitate the cross, then we must not dare ask God to take the cross another time. If sin necessitates the cross, that we have to be careful with sin. And therefore, we can't make any mistakes in regard to living in sin. Because sin, it is not just a little act as some persons view it. It is not just some way of thinking as some may put it. What sin does, it destroys the, the character of God in us. It damage, damages even our, our, our future salvation in relation to Christ in us. And therefore, sin has to be looked at from a, from a, from a perspective of staying far away. Because it necessitates the cross. What validates the cross? So sin necessitates the cross. But in as much as sin necessitates the cross... Something or somebody has to validate the cross. So sin tells us that somebody needs to die. But sin cannot validate the cross. What validates or who validates the cross? It is the personhood of Christ himself. Isaiah tells us that his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is to say Christ or God with us. You see, you see, my beloved friends, God knew very well. He, he knew very well that, that we are sinners, that, but, but, but that, that is, is in dying need of his grace. He knew very well that he must come as Jesus, which means Savior. He, he knew very well. Because the Bible tells us in John chapter 3 and verse number 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him 
might be saved. Who, who validates the cross? It is the only person, Christ himself. Who validates the cross? It is Emmanuel himself. Who validates the cross? It is Michael himself. I'm speaking to somebody today because someone needs to understand that it is not the pastor that validates the cross. It is not the elder that validates the cross. It is not the member that validates the cross. It is, it is not no, no entire body that validates the cross. The cross gets its validation from Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ himself. Why? Because the Bible tells us in order for Jesus to take the cross or for anyone to take the cross or for that matter, that person has to be sinless. That person has to be without spot or wrinkle or dample or, or dirt. For, for anyone to take the cross, they cannot take the cross and somebody else has to take a cross for them. In case you do not understand, what, what, what is this preacher saying? The, the preacher is simply stating that to get on the cross, you must be pure. Because if you get on the cross and, and you are in mess, then somebody needs to take care of your mess on another cross. And so what, what validates or who validates the cross, it is a, a, a spotless lamb in the personhood of Jesus himself. So the Bible tells us that he, know, he knew no sin. The Bible even goes further by telling us that in all points he was tested and yet sin not. I'm so I'm speaking to somebody today in case, in case, in case you believe that, that your hope is going low. You must understand that the trials of sin and struggle that you are presently being faced with, there is somebody who is sinless can redeem you from your mess. I have come by to tell somebody today that irrespective of your personality, irrespective of your demon, big, sinful character, there is still a spotless lamb in existence. I have come by to tell somebody that we must be reliant upon the personhood of Jesus Christ. Who validates the cross? And what validates the cross? What validates the cross? It is the decision that was taken up from the onset. That I must go to die for mankind is what validates the cross. You see, the cross, though it represented shame and misery and persecution and, and everything that is worthless, the image of the personhood of Jesus changed the narrative as it relates to the cross. Look, look, what's something with me, my beloved friends? I've showed you that, that, that in ancient times, no one wanted to be associated with the cross. As a matter of fact, the persons that were on the cross with Jesus himself was two thieves. Criminals faced the cross because it represented persecution and ridiculing. The cross never, never made, meant anything of a good nature in ancient times. Two thieves were placed on the cross. But in the midst of these two thieves, it is, who is placed? It is the Son of God himself. And Jesus himself changes the entire dynamics of the cross. Jesus changes the entire outlook of the cross. But, but watch me, my friend. Today, the cross is no longer viewed as a place for the, for the persecuted or means persecution and violence and ridiculing. Why? Because of the personhood of Jesus himself. Jesus just entered on the cross and everything about the cross changed. It moved from persecution to life-saving. It moved from ridiculing to praising. It moved from backbiting and hypocrisy to something of a new nature that speaks to the idea of salvation fall that's the power of the personhood of the cross so what or who validates the cross Jesus himself validated the cross he took upon himself come down from heaven came down from heaven and died for humanity he could have said no but when he looked down, he saw all of us. For Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 puts it this way. But God commend his love towards us. 
in that while we were yet sinners, Christ, Christ died for us. And in case, in case, in case you are missing it here, I love, I love my, my original language. So, so, so the Bible is telling us here, Paul is telling us here in his, in his original context that, that while we, he uses present continuous tense, in that while we were sinning, Christ was dying. While we were sinning, and if you want to understand it a little further, well, what Paul is saying it is that, that our, our sinful action does not cause God to make a decision. His decision is already made. Even though we are sinning, Christ was dying. Paul was painting the picture. Even those that pierced him on his side, even those that gave him the thorn of picker to place upon his head, while they were doing such, Christ was dying for them. For the Bible says that he looked on them and he said, Father, forgive them. For they know what, not what they do. And then I leave with you the last question. That will help us understand what if the cross was fake. And the last question is, what culminates the cross? The Bible tells us that Jesus, after he did everything, he said, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. What is finished? Is it that Jesus will go to sleep and never wake again? What is finished? Is it that there will be no sin in our universe again? What is finished? Does this mean that there will be no hypocrisy, no backbiting, no struggle, no health problems? Does it mean that a Christian man will not have some crucibles to face. It is finished. What does it really mean? Well, you see, my friends, to be an ambassador for Christ speaks to the idea that irrespective of what will come, you are going to stay with Christ. And therefore, my friends, understanding the culmination of the cross speaks to the idea that one must be willing to sacrifice all to gain all. The culmination of the cross should lead us in understanding that a relationship with Jesus simply means that at any moment we can lose everything. But at, at, at any time, at the very same juncture, we can gain everything. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. My friends, I want you to understand this evening that the cross is not just about an action that took place. The cross is much more than three individuals placed on three cross. Jesus in the middle gave up the ghost. The cross is much more than the actions of the Romans. The cross is much more than persecution and shame and ridiculing. The cross speaks more because the cross carries with it an ideology. The cross carries with it a lifestyle. The cross carries with it a character that is embedded in a relationship with Jesus. The mega narrative of the cross is Jesus saving humanity. What culminates the cross? Stay with me. In understanding the culmination of the cross, you must first to understand that the cross is the only place where the power of sin can be destroyed. The cross is the only place where the power of sin can be destroyed. And also, the cross is the only place where the power, where we get the power to overcome sin. Or, or where the power of overcoming sin is obtained, the cross. 
There is nowhere else any human being can gain any other power to overcome sin than the cross of Jesus Christ. And therefore, my friends, what culminates the cross? We need to understand today that it is our living relics of Christ and his constant love towards us that helps us to understand the culmination of the cross. The culmination of the cross, it is not when Jesus gave up the cross because it was not finished. Jesus felt that it is finished and he gave up the cross. But what does it really mean? As a Greek student, it is finished is written in the imperative mode in Greek. It is tetelesta in Greek. And the perfect tense in Greek simply speaks to the idea that the action in the present will have serious consequences in the future. What was the action at the present? The action at present, Jesus said it is finished and he gave up the ghost. So he died. But Jesus, Jesus is saying here, when he, when he uttered it is finished, it is, he's saying here that, that this death that you would have just experienced will have serious consequences in the future devil. And, and, and today, my beloved friends, in as much as it happens hundreds of, of years ago, we still have the implication of the cross today. Serious consequence in the future. What Satan thought it, it, it is that when Jesus uttered it is finished, it is totally finished. Hence the reason why he, he locked him up into a tomb and placed a big stone around the tomb. And not just, not just placed a big stone, but he also placed guards around the tomb. Why? Because he wanted to ensure sure that he, he keep him there. Little did Satan know that this death would revitalize the power within God himself. And therefore no stone will be able to hold his body down. No, no amount of guards and securities would be able to hold him down. Why? Because the cross is much more than an action man. The cross, what culminates the cross is the resurrective power of Jesus in our lives today. My beloved friends, you are here and you're saying, Pastor, what culminates the cross is a relationship with the sinner and his maker. And therefore, if we do not have a relationship with God, the cross means nothing to us. If we do not live a life in Jesus, the cross means nothing to us. If we do not represent the power of God today, the cross means nothing to us. If we continue to allow sin to reign in our lives, the cross means nothing to us. If we continue to live a life of anyhow, the cross means nothing to us. Pastor, what culminates the cross? It is to see a sinner change in becoming a saint. What culminates the cross? It is when a sinner asks God to help him or her change from their sinful ways. What culminates the cross is the effect of the cross. And the effect of the cross should be one that calls sinners to repentance. And to a mega question, what if the cross was fake? Well, my beloved friends, if the cross was fake today, this world would not have been a habitable one. If the cross was fake today, there would be no love in our society. If the cross was fake, salvation was out the door. If the cross was fake today, there will be no young Angelion, no gospel preaching. If the cross was fake today, there will be no police officers on our street because it would only be bloodshed. If the cross was fake today, it simply means that there would be no savior. If the cross was fake today, there would be no plan of salvation. If the cross was fake today, think about it, my friends. Where would we be at this time? If the cross was fake today, we will render an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Think about it with me, my friends. If the cross was fake today, would there be anything as corporate worship? 
I want you to, I want you to, I want to stretch your imagination a little further. If the cross was fake today, would there be anything as a relationship with God? You know, Paul, in Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 12, he's speaking to the believers. He was establishing the fact that the believers have sufficient to serve God. Hebrews chapter 11 speaks in relation to persons that were sinners, but God gave them power to overcome sin. Hebrews chapter 11 speaks to the idea, champions of faith. And, a, and several names were listed in the champion of faith. But then Paul uses a conjunctive particle in chapter number 12. Therefore, seeing we have such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. What Paul is saying here, the cross neutralizes every sinful tendencies. The cross makes a sinner look like a sin. The cross makes a crook look like a child of God. The cross makes a murderer look like an holy individual. The cross makes those of us who are crooked and, and bent up and intertwined cause us to be viewed as straight. This is the power of the cross. Let us, he says, lay aside every weight. Why? Because the cross neutralizes sin. And Paul is saying here, yeah, if the cross neutralizes sin, then everything else, let it go. You are listening to me this evening. And there are many things that is causing you to see the cross in a particular way. I'm saying to you today, let it go. Why? Because if the cross was fake, we would have been in a hopeless reality. But I thank God today that the cross is not fake. I say, I thank God that the cross is not fake. I thank God that the, that, that the whole narrative of Jesus coming to die is a real one. But we can only know that it is real because of our personal experience. So today I'm calling you. Today I'm calling you. Wherever you are, you may be abroad, you may be in Grenada, you may be wherever. I'm calling you today to honor the cross. Because the power of the cross is found in the personhood of Jesus himself. Note well, it is not an action that took place, but it is something that will live with us forever. The implication of the cross lives on. Therefore, let us lay aside everything else that seeks to cause us not to view the cross for what it is. Does the cross still have merit in our world today? Certainly so. No one, no entity, no behavior could change the merit of the cross. Because everything about the cross points to a particular individual. As I close, we know the story on the cross with the two thieves. One thief believed that Jesus should have the power to take him down, his friend, and Jesus himself. In other words, he was, he was mocking the power of God, saying, you save others, you can't save yourself. Well, on the other hand, Jesus will hear the prayer of any sincere sinner. The other is saying, Master, today, remember me in thy kingdom. And Jesus looked at him and he said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Every sincere act of, on the sinner's part God will not turn a blind eye. And so today, my friend, what if the cross was fake? I thank God that the cross is not fake. Had the cross been fake, I would not be here. Had the cross been fake, you would not be here. But we thank God today for the authenticity of the gospel of the cross. We move the cross from shame and persecution to red and ridicule to a place where salvation is offered unto us. May God grant unto us his peace.
as we delve on the cross. Father, we bless your name in all the earth. Grant unto us your peace and your wisdom as we follow your cross. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Online viewers, what a powerful message from God this evening. I pray that we all had learned something and we will share it with someone this week so they can be blessed and be drawn closer to God. Before I go, I would like to share with you some announcements. Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Zoom ID 874-9040-9613. Passcode 013803. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Remember Pastor's Corner at 11.30 a.m. on Tuesday, and our read broadcasts will be at 8 p.m. Youth Live Unplug on Friday at 7 p.m., Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m., followed by Sabbath evening service at 4 p.m. And join us next Sunday at 7 p.m., where we will learn more about our Creator. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you so much for this wonderful program that we have had this evening. Lord, we ask that you will bless each online viewer here who are listening. We pray that you will continue to protect them, provide for them, and cover them with your blood. Continue to help them to keep focus on you and keep their eyes always on you, Lord Jesus. And as you go through this week, I pray that you will go forward and make a way so that they can have a successful week. So take charge and control of everything, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for your mercy, and we thank you for hearing and answering prayers. In your name I pray, amen. Have a wonderful week ahead, everyone, and may God bless you. In all the nations, in all the world